What's up YouTube and welcome back to a new video. Today we're gonna learn a well-known technique on how to use cloth to inflate some shapes and create some interesting motion. Those are widely known techniques and have been used in industry for a while now. And I'll be honest, there's plenty of tutorials like this out there. But what is unique about this one is we're gonna learn about motion as well as the material. This one is packed with interesting details, so let's dive right into it. Let's go. Let's start by creating a cube. Shift A, mesh, cube. We're gonna make it bigger on the X. I'm using the handles, or you can use SX, works too. Something like that. Control A, S. I'm gonna open a geometry node panel here, and I'm gonna click on new. I'm gonna add a node with Shift A, S called mesh to volume. That's going to take our mesh and transform that into a volume. I'm going to add a distribute point on volume. So that we start <laughs> distributing points into the volume. We'll play with the density later. Then shift A as instance on points like that here. I'm gonna need a instance and I will use a icosphere. I'm gonna plug the mesh to the instance. Now I have a bunch of icosphere. These are a little bit too big. So I'm gonna go with 0.7 maybe. And I'm gonna increase subdivision to three. I also want them to have random value scale. So I'm gonna add a random value node and plug that into the scale. And for the minimum, I want 0.6. They are intersecting a little bit too much, so we're gonna use a merge by distance node. Shift A, S, merge by distance, and we're gonna plug that right after the distribute on point. We're gonna tweak the distance, maybe 1.5. I want to add a shade smooth, set shade smooth. Now we have some cool spheres and we're gonna use a last node called realize instances. That's gonna help us with the close simulation to work. Let's play with density, maybe two. Okay, that's probably a good starting point. We are actually done with the geo nodes for now. So I'm gonna collapse that a little bit more and we're gonna focus on the close simulation itself. I'm gonna duplicate this cube, control C, control V, and I'm gonna remove the geometry nodes from this cube. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go into object properties, viewport display, and wire. So now I'm gonna try to make that box encapsulate all of my fears. Once again, this is not a new tutorial. This is not a new technique. A lot of great people like Ducky and Robbie have done tutorials about this. So that's why I'm kind of speeding up through this process. Basically taking a simple concept, but bringing it to the next level with some kick-ass visuals and animations. Now let's start playing with the close simulation. I can rename that Collider. I'll go to Physics Properties and click on Collision. I'll go back to the cube and this time I'm going to click on cloth. I've tried some simulations before, so I kind of know the numbers. So I'm going to input them straight away and we will tweak them a little bit. Quality steps to 10, speed multiplier 0.02. The simulation is going to be quite fast. So having a 0.02 speed multiplier will slow down the animation, which will make it more smooth. Tension and compression. Let's put that to nine. For the damping, let's put that to two. Pressure is the one we're really interested in, so I'm gonna enable this one and I'm gonna set the pressure to 80. I'm gonna open field weight and I'm gonna decrease gravity to zero. I'm gonna open collision and I'm gonna enable self collision and I'm gonna increase the quality to 15. It's gonna take a little bit more time to bake, but the simulations are gonna be a little bit more accurate. Let's play this one back and see what we got. The collider is not working, so let's work on this one. I'm going to click on collider. I'm going to hit tab 3A 
I'm gonna type F3 and flip normals. Boom. Rewind, play back again. So now my sphere are colliding with the collider. This is pretty cool already and you can likely leave it at that, but I would like those spheres to squish a little bit together. So I'm gonna use a force field called vortex. Shift A, force fields and vortex. I'm going to set a strength to 60 and I'm going to add a noise amount to 10 and I'm going to play that back. So now those spheres are getting closer together. I'm going to rename this cube to spheres GN for geonodes. I'm going to go to the modifiers and I'm going to add a sub D surface. So when those balls are squishing together, I have a little bit more definition. My simulation is done, but I want to show you a few parameters that you can play with to art direct a little bit your simulation. The first one is going to be the stiffness. If I decrease my stiffness, everything will expand way more, which is also a really cool effect, by the way. But that's how you can art direct the expansion and the stiffness of your spheres. On the other side, if I go to like a higher value, let's say 20, then my sphere will not really deform. It's also a really cool effect if you want to represent a stiffer vibe. The other one is the pressure. This is how much the initial sphere will expand. I have 80, but let's try something nuts like 200 and see what that does. So now those sphere will still stay a little bit stiffer, but will really expand and use the whole space. Also another really cool vibe and another cool effect you can play with. If you go overboard, let's say 1000, you will start to have some weird stuff happening with your spheres, which can be a cool effect too, by the way. It all depends on what you're going for. I ended up going with 90 on pressure and 10 on the stiffness, tension and compression, and two with the damping. First, I'm gonna tweak my resolution. I still need my thumbnail, so let's go with 1080p. I still feel like this is quite fast. So I'm gonna tweak the speed again, and maybe I'll go to 0.01. I really want to capture the slow motion and the effect. And I'm going to cache the whole animation from 250 and I'm going to click on bake all dynamics. This is going to take a minute. So now my animation is completely baked and I can go to any frame without having the trouble to compute. Let's work on the materials and lighting. I'll stay pretty simple and use easy HDRI. Go back to one of my HDRIs, change the background display to solid. And maybe I'll use this one for now and increase the strength by two. I'm going to hide my collider. I'm going to change my background color to something like this. I want to try to get to like a rose gold kind of vibe. I'm going to go to material properties, new material, rose gold. If I start changing the color, you can tell the sphere are not affected. It's actually because in geometry node, don't forget to select geometry nodes. I need to add a set material at the end and I'm going to select my rose gold and now Things are working. Let's go back to the shader editor. We're going to use a fernal node to drive a few things. Fernal. Base color. I want to drive the color as well as the roughness with that. So I'm going to set that to 1.6 and I'm going to add a color ramp. I'm going to duplicate that plug that to the same input and put that into the roughness. 
for the roughness, what I'm going for is something polished around the edges and quite rough in the middle. So I'm going to move my sliders around until I get that effect. Feel free to get out of the camera to have a better view of what you're doing. And I'm going to squeeze that. I'm also going to work on the colors. That looks pretty cool. Maybe let's tweak that a little bit. Something like this here. Let's try a different color for that. And I'm going to turn the metallic to one. Boom. I'm going to tweak the roughness a little bit more. I really want that to be around the edges. And I'm going to change my background color too. I'm going to rotate my HDRI a little bit. That's pretty cool. Let's play back our animation. That looks pretty cool. The last trick I want to show you is how to use the camera and the depth of field to make that even more majestic. So I'm going to select my camera. I'm going to enable depth of field. I'm going to add a empty. I'm going to switch this view to 3D port so I can move my empty. And I'm going to move the empty on my focal point. Basically the area that will be in focus. Go back to the camera. Focus object. Select my empty. And I can decrease my f-stop. And you can play with that to make it more or less extreme. I'm going to speed up the video, take a few camera angles, render a few sequences, and I will see you in a second. for following and I hope you learned a few things. This one was a really fun one. Don't forget to like, comment and please subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.